Hello everyone, welcome to Dirty Hands Clean Living. My name is Star, and today I'm going to be talking about my 2020 garden plans. So if you wanna hear what seeds I'm growing, what projects I'm building this year, and some DIYs that I'm doing, uh, stay tuned and keep watching. So this video is also going to be kind of a mini unboxing of my new um, MI Gardener or Michigan Gardener seeds, uh, which I'm super excited about. So let's go ahead and open this up. Ooh, I forgot I actually ordered this many seeds. <laughs> so first I have Rainbow Swiss Chard. I have some Temptation Strawberry, All-American Parsnip, Golden Ball Turnips, American Flag Leeks, some uh, giant red mustard beans, prize head leaf lettuce, um, and I accidentally ordered two of these, but I wanted some lettuce with some color because color equals more nutrients. Scarlet kale, again, I have kale already, which I'll show you in a minute, but again, I just wanted more of like a purple kind of variety. I got some broccoli rabe or rabe. I don't really know how you say it, but it's like baby broccoli. It's very delicious if you haven't had it before. And then chioga beets, which I'm super excited about. They have a super cool like candy cane kind of stripe inside of them. So that's what I just got from In My Gardener. So I'm super excited to plant those this year. I don't know if I'll get around to planting all of them because if you're starting your first garden, all of the tips online say that you should start small, which I have not really listened to because I tend to get a little overexcited. So we'll see if I get to planting all of these this year, but I'm gonna try and it doesn't hurt to try and just experiment with things. Now for the seeds that I already had. So I bought some marigold seeds uh, just for some color in my garden for flowers. Uh, I also hear planting marigolds with your vegetables can kind of keep bad pests away and encourages pollinators like bees. Next, I got some lemon balm. I thought this would be great for making teas, just be like a tasty herb to add in. And then it's also great for uh, bees as well. They produce flowers that bees really love. And I can talk about that in the future too. Having flowers with your vegetable garden is really important because pollinators help pollinate the vegetables and fruits like tomatoes that you need in order for them to grow. If they don't get pollinated, they don't grow. Uh, next I have, I've had this for probably a year and a half, so we'll see if these germinate, but I got these in my order with Lime Life by Alcone, and there's just a wildflower mix. Again, great for pollinators, and I think they'll be really pretty, and I think there's some local flowers in there too, which is always good to grow native plants. That's kind of what I have for my flowers and herbs or supplemental things. And actually I did already start planting some herbs as well, so that's why these are already opened. But I planted some sweet basil, which has already started popping up. That one popped up first. It's super easy to grow. I also got some garlic chives. Again, those popped up pretty quick too, and they seem like they're doing well. And then I have some rosemary. Rosemary can be a little bit more difficult to grow, or at least to just get the seeds to sprout up if you're growing it from seed. I have one of my seeds that has sprouted, but the rest have not germinated yet. Hopefully they'll pop up soon. I don't think it's too late. You never know. Next, some things that I've already started planting indoors this year are kale. This is dinosaur or lacinato kale. Some butter crunch lettuce, more mustard greens, and then some Georgia Southern collards. I started uh, planting a few of these indoors. I know it's a bit early for my growing zone, but um, I just wanted to experiment. I just planted a few seeds of each and we're gonna see how they do. One of my plans this year is to build a cold frame, uh, which can extend your growing season and kind of make it so you can plant plants earlier before the frost. So we're gonna see how that goes. Lettuces and collard greens, kale, things like that are pretty cold hardy. So I should be able to put them out a few weeks before frost in my cold frame and hopefully they will do well and I'll get an early harvest. And then the last few things that I had uh, are some sparkler radishes arugula rocket and Danvers carrots which are like big fat delicious carrots so hopefully I will get them to grow to be the, the size that I always see them in the grocery store. I'm excited about those. That is all the things that I'm growing this year at least so far. Oh and also I forgot I don't have seeds for them because you don't grow them from seed but I want to grow sweet potatoes this year so in a few weeks I will be going to a grocery store and actually just picking up a couple sweet potatoes because the way that you grow sweet potatoes I can make probably a whole video about it but you grow them from slips. You put the sweet potato and a glass of water and it'll sprout like a little vine and then you cut off that vine and plant that in the ground and it makes you a ton of sweet potatoes. So I'm going to try and do that this year. We will see how it goes. The next thing I wanted to show you all is this cherry tree I have growing in my backyard. Again, I rent my place so this was already here when we moved in about a year ago and I wasn't into gardening at that point. I didn't care for it at all and so it didn't produce very many cherries and what few cherries it did produce, uh, the birds ate them. 
but I'm really going to try and get this to be really alive and thriving this year. Something I'm really excited about. I did already prune away a bunch of like the dead branches that were off of this. I think there's still some life in these. We will see. I mean, it might be too late for it, but I just wanted to see. And then I'm going to do some research too. It does have some sap oozing out of it. So I'm going to see kind of what I can do and hopefully bring this thing back to life. This is the sap that I'm talking about. Again, I need to really get in there. Some of it's still a little bit frozen, I think. So I need to see what is causing the sap because sap can be caused by different things, either fungus or parasites, or maybe my dog just kind of scratched the tree or something. So we'll see if I can remedy that and hopefully get this thing to produce a lot of cherries this year. That would be awesome. Because it's already here and it's always best to cultivate the plants you already have growing because that's a free plant. Hey, Lily. <laughs> Another thing I'm gonna do to uh, help this cherry tree is my dog Willie is actually like to pee on this a lot. So I'm gonna try and put a little fence around here. And also we have rabbits, so I don't know if they're gonna end up chewing on the tree. So I'm gonna try and help keep them out that way. Or it's gonna be like a little, like an edging kind of thing. Also I might get some bird netting to put on top of here as well. So this is my raspberry bush that also came in the house whenever we moved in. And again, it's been highly neglected. So I'm going to try and really rein it in and care for it this year so we can get a better harvest of raspberries. We only got a small harvest and whatever we did get, the birds also ate a lot of as well, which sucks. But um, as you can see, so this started off as this one plant here by this stake, this kind of bundle of dead. <laughs> it Apparently I didn't realize that these are so invasive and spread so much. So you can see there's tons of little offshoots here, here, they have spread widely. So I did already kind of prune a bunch of this back. It looked a lot worse. It was very overgrown and kind of brambly. A lot of these have started growing thorns and like spikes, which is not fun. I already pruned this back some. I do probably in the next week or so actually want to get a trowel and like dig some of these out by the roots because I really don't want these spreading too far. I am going to put down some fertilizer, some compost probably, and again maybe reinforce some of this edging here to keep rabbits out and then also might put some bird netting on it to keep the birds off of it too and hopefully all of those things together will provide me a really good white raspberry harvest this year and that's another thing so my neighbor is the one who told us that we had a raspberry white raspberry bush and a cherry tree i have searched the internet all over and i cannot find white raspberries or any info on them so i don't know what they are but they do look white when they grow so if you guys have any tips or have heard about white raspberry bushes i would love some more info on that and definitely need some help the next thing i want to talk about is some of my garden projects this year what i have planned what i'm building some diys i'm doing and actually where i'm going to be planting all of my vegetables as well. So I have my windows here. One of the big things that I want to get done, hopefully in a couple weeks, is building cold frames. I literally just found these windows on the side of the road for free. And so I'm going to actually use these as like the top on a slant and then put like a box made from some wood slats and I'm going to go buy a Lowe's around the side. So it'll be like a frame that I set on top of my vegetables and it'll just kind of be like a mini greenhouse that keeps them warm. So I can actually move all my vegetables out here hopefully a few weeks early than I normally would be able to. They'll stay warm, they won't freeze. You just get a few extra weeks out of your growing season and I will hopefully have an earlier harvest as well. So in this area here with the cobblestone is actually where I'm going to be putting my garden beds. So I'm growing in soil bags this year. If you haven't heard of soil bag gardening, it's when you literally just buy a big soil bag, cut a rectangle out of the top of one side, lay it flat, you poke some holes in the bottom for drainage, but that is your container for growing your vegetables. So I'm gonna do a few of these here. And I'm doing that because I rent my house and while my landlord probably would be cool with me digging up the yard, since we're not going to be here that long, it's just not something that I want to do. With these, I'm hoping I should be able to get three or four soil bags under my cold frames here. And then also any space that I have left here, I do want to add some extra containers. I have some pots around the corners that I'll show you in a second that I will probably reuse and plant some of my vegetables in. And I also want to buy some grow bags from Amazon. They're, if you haven't heard of grow bags, they're like a, usually kind of like a wool kind of material fabric bag. They're very durable. Um, they're really great for the roots of your plants. They do this thing called air pruning. In a normal pot, 
when your plant's roots reach the outside, they just kind of swirl around and form this big knot that's kind of hard to, like if you're gonna transplant it, it's hard to move because you have to break up all the roots. But with the grow bags, since they have air moving through them, when the roots reach the air, that tells them, oh, I shouldn't go there. So they go back inside more towards the plant. They are self pruning basically. So I ended up taking my jacket off because it's super nice outside. I actually got kind of hot in my black jacket. So if you see me in some shots without it, that's why. I wanted to say another reason that I am building these garden frames or another reason that they'll be helpful is I have noticed there are a lot of rabbits in my yard. I see rabbit droppings in the corners of my yard, uh, which makes me think that I have kind of a rabbit problem and I don't want them eating all of my delicious veggies and fruits. So these will also be helpful in keeping pests like them and also my dog, honestly, from destroying my vegetables. And in the future, like if I do have a house of my own, I actually have seen people do like a separate garden to feed the wildlife there, which I think would be really cute and fun. But for now, again, I rent. I don't want to dig up any of the actual dirt in this yard, so I'm not going to. Another project I'm doing this year is making my own plant markers from spoons. If you haven't heard of Buy Nothing groups on Facebook, they are my most favorite thing ever. You can find all sorts of free things from people in your area and it's better than like the Facebook marketplace like free section because it's a bunch of like-minded people wanting usually some pretty good things to just actually get used rather than just people getting rid of their junk that no one wants. So I got a bunch of free silverware and I'm going to go to this community workshop that we have in our area where I can borrow their tools, spend a couple hours there for only ten dollars and stamp all of these with their metal stamping tools. But so those should be really cute. If you haven't seen them you stick the spoon in the dirt and then this part kind of shows the name of your plant there. I also wanted to show you all, if you haven't heard of um, the seed starting trays, I actually got this one for free from my dad. I just got really lucky and I guess he tried to start some flowers last year and then they were way too invasive for him so he decided he didn't want any more of those flowers in and he wasn't going to grow anything else. So I got this seed starting tray. You can get these for pretty cheap and it's just, you can see a bunch of modules in here that you can each fill with dirt and put one seed in each of those. This is a 72 unit tray so you can have 72 plants growing from this and then it has a little tray underneath to hold water. I'll talk about bottom watering in one of my future videos. Basically it's better for your seedlings to water from the bottom than from the top so they don't get washed away. Lastly it has a little lid and there's a little bit of water in here but you can set this on top when your seeds are just starting out and it creates like a mini greenhouse for them to kind of keep the moisture and humidity in. So those are a really great easy option if you're starting out with growing your own food from seeds. But the next thing I wanted to show you all is my front yard garden bed here. I kind of have like this finished edged bed here which as you can see I kind of let overgrow this past year. I really wasn't into gardening until recently and so I didn't know about like weeding and like care for plants. And this is my biggest problem right here. It's this what I think is a thistle plant and I let it grow to completion because I thought it was kind of pretty. It's got purple flowers but I read later on the internet that when you let it go to seed and it drops seed which I think it already has because these all look fair. Well I'm gonna have probably a lot more thistles this coming year. So we will see how difficult that battle becomes. January, February, like late winter is the perfect time to do all of your trimming, pruning because all of the plants are kind of dormant and so you can rip out plants by their roots or the weeds by their roots and they won't grow back because they're most likely going to be dead. So that's my plan for this front bed. And then I might actually grow some vegetables up here. I am not sure yet, but we will see what I decide in the coming weeks or months. And the next thing I wanted to show you guys is right over here. So I have this little front railing and I am thinking about buying or building a planter box for this railing because I think it would be so nice to grow some lettuce and have it like right here by my front door. I'll have lettuce in the backyard too which is pretty close to my back door in my kitchen but I just think it would be nice like on my way back home from work to just pick some lettuce and have my harvest. I, it just sounds nice to me. But you could grow anything in these little planter boxes too. Lettuces are just one of the easiest things to grow. Thank you everyone so much for watching uh, this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And I will see you guys next time. Bye. The, well, I'm gonna take a break just because I feel like my voice is sounding shaky because I'm like nervous. <laughs> you sound great. <laughs> Thanks. I say I'm alive. Okay. And then I have to edit all of this out. I'm gonna grab my pruning shears. I love that idea, the lettuce. Yeah. Alright guys, uh, next I wanted to show you, oh, I hate when YouTubers say guys, and then we can do a little sap footage. I see rabbit droppings in the corner. I can't speak. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I also wanted to tell you guys, gorgeous.
we stopped.